Okay, folks. We were waiting on a couple other people, but if they come, hopefully they come and we have time. For those of you that don't know me, I'm John Bellvance. I have the privilege of being the Qantas president this year. And I'd like to welcome you to our humanitarian awards. <clears throat> and for those of you that aren't aware, our humanitarian awards are for our basically our unsung heroes. They may not have a prestigious job, they may not be in the newspapers every week, but these are the people in the background that get the stuff done that we need to get done. And obviously this year, <coughs> excuse me, with the flood <coughs> and all the catastrophes we've had, we've got quite a few. Some of them couldn't be here tonight, but, and as you can tell, I'm not a great speaker, so John Lusher is here tonight to be our MC, and at this time I'd like to turn it over to John. Thank you. And before we get started, um, I just want to say thank you to Hazen Union for allowing us to use this venue and come into this auditorium and have this program. And I also want to thank uh, Casey Lucia for uh, filming. She's filming it for HCTV, so it'll be in the archives and it'll be broadcast whenever they want to. Um, <laughs> the first nominee we have is Todd Delarichelier, who's a head custodian here. And he was nominated by the principal, Jason DiGiulio, and the, assist, the other principal, Casey Potter. And um, he couldn't be here tonight, and there's a board meeting for the principals tonight, so I'm going to read Todd's introduction. This is the letter written by Jason DiGiulio, the principal. There are so many positive things I can say about Todd Delarichelier. He's a pillar of the Hardwick community. As a member of the Hazen staff, he goes above and beyond his job. Todd is always looking for ways to better our school and our community. Over the past few years, he has taken a student on as part of the custodial staff to help them build lifelong skills that will better their current life situation. He has taught them not only how important it is to show up to work on time, how to give your all and follow directions, but he has taught them how to look out for each other and trust the adults you are working with. Todd has high expectations for himself and those that work for him. You can see this in our building every day. As a member of the community, Todd is a frequent flyer at the blood drives. He has even started going to an American Red Cross site in Burlington area to give plasma so more people can benefit from his donation. Two years ago, Todd arranged for the de Groslier family to have a ceremony at the school to donate an American flag in honor of their father. Knowing how much this meant to the family, Todd had the newspaper cover the ceremony and invited members of the community to join in front of the school. During the 2023 floods, Todd was the first one here ensuring that Hazen was ready to provide relief. He is a pillar of the community and ensures that Hazen is physically ready to serve. These are just a few examples of the things Todd does for our community that might go unnoticed. I am sure there are many more that I am unaware of. Todd deserves so much recognition for how dedicated he is to Hardwick and the members of the school community. Sincerely, Jason DiGiulio and Casey Potter, Hazen Union School. So I'd like to have a round of applause for Todd. And now I would like to introduce Rose Friedman. All right. <clears throat> what does it matter that at the Legion Hall in Hardwick, Vermont, there is a free supper about once a month for whoever wants to come? Why is it meaningful that somebody deal with getting the groceries and planning the meal and writing up the sign and putting the paper on the tables? Is anything different whether or not a supper happens or if we try something new together or if we actually listen to each other, or if we stop thinking we know what the other person is thinking. On behalf of the Civic Standard, we would like to offer this humanitarian award to Ashton Allen. Because it does matter, it is meaningful, 
and things have changed because of who he is and how he lives and cooks. Ashton is a mensch, <laughs> which is a Yiddish word to describe a person of integrity, morality, dignity, with a deep sense of care and responsibility. He may not always warmly welcome you into his kitchen <laughs> to stand close by him and ask any questions you might have about what he is doing, but he embodies community and also community. <laughs> Ashton said, when you give, you're supposed to do it quietly. So apologies for the fuss, but there's nothing we can do about the fact that all of these people love you. Thank you for being our neighbor. coming here to move a mower, so I brought it well. <laughs> Thank you. Well deserved. He does a great job. If you've ever been to one of those community meals, you know the food they put out, and they have plenty of it, and they never run out, and everybody is welcome. And once he's outside the kitchen, he is very friendly and very nice. <laughs> Now I'm going to have Sherry Lucier come up and introduce our next awardee. Hi. I'm supposed to be Opie Upson right now. I think you might have been somewhere else. I'm guessing the downtown partnership thing that's going on at the same time. Is he? Oh no. Okay. So uh, we are here to give out awards for people who are unsung heroes. And uh, Wendy Bartlett is one of those folks. Um, <laughs> Wendy has worked at Tops. Uh, location since 1998, which was before she graduated from high school. She and her team of 30 to 35 people worked around the clock to clean and restock the store after the flood. Wendy worked over 75 hours after the flooding happened and had the store back open in less than one week. Wendy lives with her husband and son in Hardwick and loves her community. We, the town, this is from the town, this nomination, appreciate Wendy's commitment to her job and the community that she lives in and works in. Whenever one enters the store and Wendy is working, she's smiling and she's happy to greet other members of the community with compassion and excitement. Congratulations, Wendy. Congratulations, Wendy. Um, one note, anybody that gets an award tonight, we'd like to have you stay after to get a group picture, okay? So now, I would like to introduce the president of the Hardwick Rescue Squad, Lindsay Osteen. Good evening. Um, so of course our do-gooder of the evening is out doing more good uh, and is out in another community making them a heart safe community. Um, so I am pleased as the president of Hardwick Rescue to, to nominate Tyler on behalf of the entire organization and the town who benefits so much from his generosity. Um, 
because he is one amazing human, like many of the amazing humans that we're honoring tonight. Um, if you don't know Hardwick, I mean, if you don't, you all know Hardwick. Um, if you don't know Tyler, he is a local who grew up in the standard Hardwick area, um, and he has accomplished so much over his time growing up in this area, but especially in the last five years. Um, he's an advanced AEMT for our service. He is a healthcare educator at the University of Vermont. He also works as a registered nurse um, at the UVM Medical Center and in many other locations. Um, he obtained his master's in nursing education in 2019, and apparently that's not enough. We convinced him to get his paramedic as well, so he'll be finishing that up soon. Um, but what many don't know is Tyler moved to Milton and yet has come back and volunteered more every week than many of our paid staffers. He just has such a love and a passion for helping and educating and for his community. Um, so he was invaluable um, to me during the flooding as well as um, as our newly promoted vice president, infection control officer, training officer. I think we would all agree we could not do this without Tyler. I need like 50 more Tylers. Um, so it is my pleasure to um, have nominated him for this award and Mary Hall from Hardwick is accepting it on his behalf and he's pre-written some words that he wanted to, to share. Go ahead. So this is from Tyler, um, his thank you. I want to express my gratitude to the people who felt my contributions to Hardwick and the surrounding communities were worthy enough, worthy enough of this honor. My absence makes it difficult to express my appreciation, but know that the time is reinvested in shaping a future generation of nursing students who are working diligently until 10 p.m. tonight on their clinical requirements. So that's where he is tonight. I have a lot to be grateful for. Every single person who is here to accept this award on my behalf, which is the rest of the rescue people that are up there, um, da -da 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 -da, I lost my face, on uh, behalf tonight, has personally taken interest in getting me to where I am today. As you can imagine, it is a moving experience to be in attendance at a medical crisis and creative problem solve in the moment. The human aspect and critical thinking experience is the most important part. Many, many could assume that our protocols and classroom time prepare us adequately for the incidents we are expected to manage. It turns out, however, no one ever wrote the full book on how to care for people with complex medical needs using minimal equipment, an environment often poorly arranged to, re to render aid, and with social determinants of health that often create barriers to recovery. I do this for a living, working in emergency medicine as part of my career track. The people you, see, people you see here today all came to this from different backgrounds and all desire to make an impact and learn valuable skills and experience to do so. They all share a few things though, a love for lifelong learning, patience, compassion, and a little bit of time to give back. We are more than just one person here. This group inspired me to make this part of my life and it is truly a pleasure to have them here on my behalf tonight. And all I can say is, how lucky are we to have Tyler? How lucky is HRS to have Tyler? Thank you very much, and don't forget, I personally miss him because I used to love reading about the weather in the Gazette that he used to put in there all the time. So now I'd like to have uh, Leanne Lee come forward. I'm presenting to Lottie Allen. Um, I've known Lottie for almost 20 years. Um, I was involved with the Hardwick Area Patch. In fact, actually, that's how the awards ceremony originally started. The humanitarian awards so was um, mine and Sherry's and Allison Martin. That was our baby back oh. it was 98, I think, when it started. And then it kind of fizzled. And I'm really glad that Sherry uh, started it up again through Kiwanis a few years ago. But I digress. Um, 
Lottie, and when she moved to the community, she really wanted to be involved, and she had a few young kids and was looking to see how she could start um, showing them how to pay it forward. And she has a huge heart. And so at that time, um, the Hardwick Area Children's Holiday Project had been going on for a few years. And my sister Mary had taken over and was coordinating it. And so I got pulled in because she's my sister. And she asked me to. And I didn't really dare say no. And Lottie got pulled in because she was Mary's and my neighbor. and. Um, we were, Mary ran it for 10 years, <clears throat> and when she was ready to step down, she asked if we would co-coordinate it, and we didn't even hesitate, we just, we did it. And she likes to say that we share responsibilities and it's 50-50, not even close. I would write the letters and get them to the, the newspapers or email to people. Lottie was the one who got all the boxes to the schools. To the, she got all the tags to the, the banks. She got hold of Toys for Tots. She and usually Pearlie, but sometimes a few others would go and they would go to New Hampshire. They would go wherever they had to go to get truckloads of toys. And we would regularly um, make sure that we provided Christmas for over 200 kids in the OSSU in Walden. And she then COVID hit. And we stopped being able to do it at the church. We had to do it out of their home because we couldn't have people coming and doing the large group. And so thank you, Pearlie, for <clears throat> not saying no or not, or maybe you did. She just did it anyway. <laughs> Um, but, but they're, they're very nicely dry basement because they live high enough in town um, is now where we keep all the toys for over 200 kids every year. And what we do with the leftover toys, which aren't a lot, but we have some, um, whenever there's, uh, sadly, if there's a home that burns or um, this summer we had families who were tragically lost a lot in the flood, we put together, we, I say, hey Lottie, here's a family. Can you please put a box together? And she did, diligently goes and she finds all the toys for the right ages or, you know, card, gift cards for teenagers so that they can get, you know, a fishing pole or something from um, right way or, and she makes it happen. Or, you know, if a foster parent doesn't have, you know, because children quite often literally will go with a plastic bag and um, some clothes. And so she makes sure that they have toys that they can have to call their own when they go into foster care. Um, this last fall, I had, to, as center manager at Head Start, I had the pleasure of having Lottie come to work for me. And she has been able to use her decades long experience of working with um, primarily children with special needs and also she's also uh, been a foster parent and adoptive parent and she literally hit the ground running. She was hired to be our teacher assistant and she walked in and I said you're not going to be doing that because we we're short-staffed and we don't have a one-on-one. -on -one. But how about you do this job instead? And she never even questioned it. She, did, she performed the one-on-one -on -one and then also did her actual job that she was hired for when she was able to. And she's just amazing. Everybody adores her. The kids run up to her, Miss Lottie, Miss Lottie. She just, she's just all around amazing. and. I'm proud to call her my good friend.
Congratulations, Lottie. Well deserved. Well deserved. Thank you, Leanne. Now I'm going to call Sherry back up here to introduce our next awardee. Okay, before I asked you to pretend I was open, now I'm going to ask you to pretend that um, Opie is standing next to me because, uh, although he didn't know it, and I'm sorry he's sick, um, he was uh, selected to by the Hardwick Select Board, and I don't think I see any Select Board members here now. I think also that they are at the Downtown Partnership event um, to get his own award. Uh, as town manager and um, as a town manager who does above and beyond. Um, and so I, I'll read to you what um, the president or the chair of the select board wrote to me. Um, and then I'll give you a little story and I'll try not to embarrass <laughs> you shaking your head now. Um, <laughs> um, so David Upson Jr., known to many as Opie, came to work at Hardwick's, as Hardwick's town manager at the end of 2022. Prior to joining the town, Opie worked for a decade as Vermont State Trooper. And before that, he had a career managing wastewater treatment facilities in northern Vermont. Opie's technical background in wastewater, his understanding of policing, his ability to communicate with people, uh, and his willingness to ask questions and learn, and his love for Hardwick, have made him an excellent town manager. <clears throat> his compassion and his desire to help the residents of Hardwick made him invaluable resource and leader in the midst of the 2023 flood and its aftermath. The select board is proud to nominate him for the Kiwanis Humanitarian Award. So, um, just as an example, last year at the Spring Festival, um, Opie had met with a, a community committee um, since December, from December to the Spring Festival, every Monday on Zoom, and had been invaluable as a resource for us for many different things that were going on at the Spring Festival and the parade and all the other things that are happening that day. and. Um, so that day came along and he was everywhere. And so he, he agreed to do the dunking booth and he agreed to be voted on to kiss a goat, which he won by the way and he still owes a goat a kiss. Um, he, and, and you know, he was around the parade and, and one, at one point within about five minutes, he was visiting with uh, me and some other Kiwanians, making sure everything was going as we had needed. Um, he turned around because he had to go to the human truck pull, so because he had a team that was pulling. But on the way, um, uh, Ori Sainsworth was having trouble with her canopy, taking it down. She was selling crafts. And so he stopped, and he took that down for her. And then he went on to do the human truck pull, and as soon as that was done, he had to run up to the ballpark because he had volunteered to ump the Tristan Southworth Memorial baseball game. Um, so within just a few minutes, that was, you know, a few minutes in the day of OB. Um, and so I, I, I can't speak enough about him with the flood. Um, and if I did, I'd probably cry. Um, so, the select board, I was a chair of the select board at one point, so I guess I'm qualified, um, is proud to give the humanitarian award to Opie Upson. Well, I can tell Sherry's story and I won't cry. <laughs> During the flood at about 11.30 at night, her daughter Casey was in the house on Wilkett Street 
and the water had gone over the banks and the current was going down through there and Opie somehow got a boat and with three other fire people walked that boat, two on a side, down through waist deep water and the current because they couldn't sit in the boat and steer it because the current was so tough, put Casey in the boat and brought her out and no hesitation at all and that's the town manager that we have plus the fire department we have and the police department we have. So we're very lucky in this community. So now I'm going to turn this back over to John Bellavance to give closing remarks. I can do it for you, John, if you want. <laughs> I was afraid of that. Yeah. We actually have one more humanitarian award and Sherry tried to sneak on John's program, the fact that he wasn't on there, but it didn't work, he found out. Unfortunately, he's got me speaking for him. <laughs> but Sherry did do a nice write-up for him, and I can, all my years of experience with John, I can honestly say a few things as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Monique did the write-up. <laughs> no, there's, there's no four-letter words in it, John. <laughs> so, but as you all know, John can always be counted on to be there for our community. <clears throat> Everyone knows that he's our go-to guy for MCN, but he's always busy behind the scenes as well. Right now, besides being an active member of Kiwanis, he's serving as the Grand Knight for the Knights of Columbus here in Hardwick. And that's at a time when they experienced major flooding and they've got some serious issues of their own. And as we all know, the volunteer is dropping, so <clears throat> the ones that are active are taking a bigger role. Also, but some of the things that you may not know about John is uh, with his volunteer activities, he's, uh, and let me digress a little bit. We, in Kiwanis, we have what we call the Donut Project. And what had happened was Donut, correct me if I'm wrong, but Donut was our longest running member in Kiwanis. Is that right there? I think if one of them. One of them. <clears throat> so, so at, uh, excuse me, at Donut's passing, the Bassett family made a very generous donation to Kiwanis because Kiwanis was a very big part of Dona's life. So what we did was we came up with what we call the Dona Project. One of Bears and the Bassett family's um, wants or is, and of course it makes sense as he's driving the buses all over all our towns, <clears throat> Bear would like to see our streets and our roads a little bit better kept up. I know we do it in the springtime but with their generous donation, we decided to start the Donut Project. And <clears throat> now when we get back to John, John has taken the biggest role in it, and John has adopted Bridgman Hill. And John personally takes care of Bridgman Hill every spring and summer and whenever it's needed. So that's one of the things that you may not know. But John always also keeps up with our seniors. And I won't embarrass him by telling him the personal experience that he told us. But through his Knights of Columbus, through Kiwanis, and on a personal level, there's a few seniors here in town that need a little extra help that may not be able to get it, may not be able to get out to get it, but John is there to help. And of course, most recently, he has volunteered his time to be an MC for the Banner Night, <coughs> excuse me, a neighbor to neighbor dinner in this community, and his mind is not new. John has always been active. When I was growing up, John was coaching, umpiring, basketball, Little League, and he also announces the games here in town. So when I mentioned the unsung heroes, the ones that may not have pre prestigious jobs, may work for themselves, but aren't in the papers every week, John's a perfect example. So we at Kiwanis would like to sponsor John as our Humanitarian of the Year. Well, this caught me by surprise tonight. I should make John pay by talking for an hour, but I won't. Um, the things that I do that he mentioned, I don't know as if I deserve an award for it because they're things that I enjoy. 
and if you enjoy something, you don't necessarily need to be awarded for it. Um, I do enjoy walking on Bridgman Hill and picking up cans and bottles and garbage and stuff. Um, I need to get my steps in, according to my wife, so that helps there. I like doing the MC in because I always have a front row seat and I get in for free. Um, so it's all good. But anyways, um, I really want to thank you very much for this, John. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I've got to call John back up here to <laughs> say a few more words. Switching back. So that pretty much concludes our ceremonies tonight. Congratulations to all the winners. And like John announced, we'd like to get a group picture for those that are here before you leave. <clears throat> and just a couple of announcements. A couple of programs that Qantas has going on. Our, our next event is going to be a blood drive. It's going to be right here, right? At Hazen Union again? In the auditorium. In the auditorium. Thank you again, Todd. Um, yeah, that was great when Todd started to host them here. American Legion let us use the American Legion, but we would always, we would help them clean up. When Todd doesn't want our help, he's got, he takes care of everything. The guy is great. So May 11th is our next, that's town meeting day, right? May 5th. May 5th, I'm sorry, May 5th. So, how about, okay. Well, we may have one in May too, right? <laughs> so, all right, so let's, let's try that again. March 5th, right here. And then uh, Spring Fest this year, our theme is all about our veterans. And our theme is actually veterans, our hometown heroes. <clears throat> and we'd like to put a, when we came up with it, we want to put a spotlight on the American Legion. Because a lot of people don't know how much the American Legion does. All, I mean, they we have a lot of programs that you don't know about, but they have just as many, if not more. Um, so members of the American Legion will be our Grand Marshals. <clears throat> and that, of course, is, make sure I get this right, that's going to be in May, the last weekend of May. Um, and one thing that I forgot to, forgot to do in the beginning, which I wanted to, is we do have one VIP here, and I want to embarrass him, our very own uh, Qantas member, who is actually our Lieutenant Governor, we are part of a, is it district or division? We, what would you say? We're division seven of the New England and Bermuda district. Okay, so it's called a division, not a district. And there's, uh, there's seven or eight of us in it. And amongst the seven or eight, there's always a lieutenant governor nominated. And our very own Rich Jacobs from Morrisville, who's a Hardwick Kwanian, is our lieutenant governor. He has been for two years. <clears throat> and it's, so it's very nice of him to be able to come and make it. He, he does all the traveling checks with all the, all the uh, different <clears throat> Qantas clubs. <clears throat> so it, we're very fortunate to have him here tonight. So I just wanted to introduce Rick Jacobs. <clears throat> and then lastly, you don't want to sit here and listen to me. So <clears throat> I just want, as I was sitting there, I was thinking, you know, everybody that's sitting here has probably got a name in their head of a nomination that should have been here tonight. There's probably hundreds of people that should be awarded tonight. Well, if you think of it, don't wait until next year. Sherry is our secretary. Sherry's got an email. Sherry's got a computer. She'll make sure and write it down. And we'll, if you think of anybody at all that deserves this award, because I'm sure there's plenty of them, <clears throat> make sure and get the information to Sherry, and we'll have an even bigger event next year. But that's our program. Please have something to eat or drink before you leave. And thank you to all the winners. Thank you for everybody for coming and supporting them. Have a good evening.